source of the Humber Brook behind me. It runs for about 13 mile and flows into the River Lug, which was the first river my brother Paul and I walked for the Y Explorer project. So welcome guys to the Humber Brook hike and wild camp. It's a day before my 49th birthday, uh, 1st of July tomorrow. It's twinged with sadness and expectation this walk because evidently this is the first birthday I've experienced without Paul, my dear twin, who many of you know died in November. And this was a walk Paul planned. He planned this walk, he contacted all the landowners to see if he could, if we could pass through their property, but sadly he died shortly after planning it. So this last week or so I've contacted them all and they've been kind enough to let me pass through their property. Now, I don't know whose property this is but there's no right of way here so I'm not going to traipse through uh, these fields to the source. What I will do is walk down the bottom of the road here and take a look at the brook as close to the source as I can get it. But that's the source, just in that little dip there. So this is the kind of environment in which these brooks emerge in. Beautiful Herefordshire countryside, rolling hills, lots of woodland around here, so we should have a good time. All right, guys, this is a birthday hike. This is a remembrance hike and it's a river hike. Or should I say a brook hike, the Humber Brook. All right, join me. Let's see what we see, let's see what we find, and let's see how we feel, huh? All right, take care now. Well, this is as close to the source of the Humber Brook as I'm going to get. Uh, upstream, it's all thick arable land and I haven't got permission to go through it. So, as I said, this will have to be it. But I'm glad to be here. I know it sounds a bit wacky, a bit geeky, you know. It's another brook, it's another river. This is actually Y catchment this brook flowing into the lug and then the River Wye. And we're miles away from the River Wye. Miles and miles away. So, you know, you get to, you get some idea of what a catchment is about. But this bridge is uh, by subscription only. 1878, so the local community would have funded this. Back in the feudal days, you know. <laughs> so here we are, right again. One more time. We're about to set off. And I'm reminded of what John Muir once said back then in the 18th century, the Scottish explorer. He said, keep close to nature's heart and break clear away once in a while and climb a mountain or spend a week in the woods. Wash your spirit clean.
country route, isn't it? <sighs> Look at this old gate. Now then, this is an old route. Check it out. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at that. Nice little dingle with a beautiful old gate. Just the type of thing we like to see. Old England, right here. <laughs> I was right. Often map reading is an intuition, isn't it? It's a sense that you have, it's, you know, uh, sense in the land, your orientation. See, I'd orientated the map, so I knew the general direction in which I needed to go. You've just not got to flap and feel your way. So we've just crossed the brook, we've come through here, we're at the road and we're turning right and what we're doing is we're rejoining the Humber Brook just for a short period there and then back onto the road and we're heading then towards Docklow Pools. Most unusual. I've been talking to Paul all the way. Way, way in my higher self, I've just realised. And we've been agreeing upon the route. <laughs> it's most unusual. Beautiful, but unusual. We're back on the trail of the brook. The Humber Brook. which shares the same name with the Humber Estuary Umbra and this is the only part of the Y catchment which shares the same name as the Humber Estuary very very interesting link and I have a video of Paul and I hiking the Humber Estuary. If you want to, if you want to check out the link below, it's really quite a cracking video. I don't suppose many of you have watched it, but it's there. All right, give it a go. Well, I'm no vet. I would say that you're not very well, huh? What's wrong with you? Usually you're gone in a shot. I'm gonna leave you alone, okay? 
Whatever your fate is, it's yours. When I sit in peace with myself and all things around, I can see, feel and touch divinity. My heart soars with love and my mind fills with ancient understanding. When I play with the trees, and when I choose to sit with the gentle breeze, Mother Earth's soul vibrates from within and from without. There can be no doubt that this is peace. When I see something beautiful to create, my delight is such that I want to share it with someone I love. The sun shines this way for you and me. What a day. It is here I love to stay, sharing this day. What a day, what a day. A poem by my twin brother, Paul. Beautiful rolling Herefordshire. Is there, I wonder, a four-leaf clover in there? Well, I haven't got the time to find out. Paul has got a press at home, a flower press. And inside it are four leaf clovers pressed. I don't know how he did it, but he was good at finding them. He must have been some kind of magical guy. <laughs> and he certainly was. He had this sense for beautiful things. And he'd find them. <laughs> so yeah, they're treasures they are back home. I'll have them forevermore to remind me of my beautiful twin brother. And he gave me one once in a a little tiny frame and I've got it on my bedside. It's lost its colour because the light has bleached it, but still a four leaf clover. <laughs> wow, beautiful, beautiful out there. Oh, <laughs> we got a field of uh, moody cattle. And they're all with young. Let's see what happens. <laughs> silly cows usually, that's why we call them silly cows, isn't it? Because they're very unpredictable. <laughs> you right, beauty? Yeah, they were cool. <laughs> no worries, mate. No worries. Look at that place there. That's a right old gem. Looks Tudor. 
possibly 14th, 15th century maybe. This is a beautiful old farm. I love old farms like this, they're absolutely beautiful. Rooted in the land for sure. Breaking the rules a bit. But it's just getting off that main road. And I want to see the pools. Alright, see you in a bit. I think we're getting there. We're going to emerge out of this copse in a minute. I've got to get a, a move on really, I've got to get to Risbury. I said I'd give my friend a ring, Erica, who was Paul's friend. Uh, she said she'd come up and join me at the Risbury camp. Here are the pools. Got some ducks on them too. whole range of different pools here. I don't know what this one is. I have no idea. It's pitch number 10 anyway. Pitch number 10. You've got chalets as well. Oh yeah. People pay a premium to come and fish here. There's um what is it? There's carp, uh bream, chub, tench, roach I think. There's all sorts of fish in these pools. And they've got a canal as well, uh, a canal strip, nine pools. As I say, I don't know what pool this is, but this is one of the oldest um, places of its kind in Great Britain. It was opened in, what was it, 1972, Docklow Pools. And people from all over come and fish here. Here's my friend Erica. We've met a little earlier than expected. She doesn't like the camera. Erica! Hiya! <laughs> How you doing? I'm alright. How are you doing? Alright. Oh, I've got so much clobber in here. Erica, as I said, early meeting. Alright, I'm gonna stick it in the back. Yeah. Alright. Look at this. What you been doing? Oh, I don't know. I'm not talking my car out. <laughs> oh. Oh. There you go. Oh, hello Erica. Hello, fancy meeting you here. I know. Good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> On the road to nowhere. On the road to nowhere. Right, I'm going to stop the camera. I am telling a story. Yeah, it's the Humber Brook story. Right, okay. Cheerio. Erica, me, Erica. Yeah, just a quick mention. This is the uh, ley line stone. 
Alfred Watkins, Erica. I have no idea. Yeah, this, this is where he had his revelation. Is it? Yeah. And this is to mark the spot or the area where he had that revelation and went on that magical journey to discover all the ley lines in the UK. Wow. Yeah. So this is where Alfred Watkins, around here at some point, walking about, went, wow, there's a ley line. How, I mean, how do you discover a ley line? How did he come across a ley line? Must have felt it. Must have felt it. Yeah, yeah, a very intuitive human being, I would say. Okay, can we come through? Indeed. Can come into your pasture, please? <laughs> <laughs> so Troy and I walked up here. Okay. Hello, hello horse. Hello. Can't ah there you go. There you are. I just thought Erica, it's like the three of us are together. <laughs> yeah. It's like Paul's inside the horse. So we're at Risbury Hill Fort and Erica and I are just saying that uh, three, three and a half thousand years ago this would have been home to quite a few people. Because it is quite a large hill fort, Erica, isn't it? It is big on the yeah, it is. Yeah. It is really big on the top. Yeah. I think this is where we went up because I remember there being a fallen tree. Oh really? So did we just scramble up the side of it? I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, there would have been a lot of domestic stuff going on. There would have been hunting parties. People possibly um Taking care of the security, do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, they would have had lookouts, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's covered in apple trees. Wow, look at that. And there are goats? Herefshire cattle. Oh, is it cattle? Yeah. Well, we'll walk right round the perimeter, shall we? Okay. Yeah. And see. There's an opening which we went through and um, lost sight of each other. Paul went off one way and, I, and, and then I looked, I was, uh, after about half an hour, I was looking around and thinking, where's Paul? I was, Paul, Paul, no answer, no answer. <laughs> He's off. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know where he is, but never mind, I've got the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a long so walk back. I came back through the gap and he was sitting there on a pile of wood saying, oh, I didn't know where you were, Erica, so I thought I'd just sit here and wait for you. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't going to panic. No, no. 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 That's my view for this evening and tomorrow morning. I've got the sheep for company in this beautiful orchard. And I've just been for a beautiful walk with Erica. She picked me up off the A44 there, and as I mentioned, <clears throat> it's only it only took two miles or so out of the trip. It was unexpected. She gave me a call on the mobile. 
she was in Lempster, we were going to meet here at Risbury Hill Fort. But I hadn't reached here by the time she gave me a call. So instead of wait for an hour or so, she came and picked me up. And Paul and Erica had walked around Risbury Hill Fort last summer. And it was a bit of a revisit for Erica. So that was a really, really special evening, that. Retracing the steps of a walk that Erica and Paul had taken a year before. And Paul walked right through this orchard and uh, over that bridge last year with Erica. So <clears throat> I made the right choice to walk Humber Brook. As I said at the beginning, this is a remembrance walk. There's sadness in it. There's adventure. The adventure is in rediscovering myself without Paul. That's where the adventure is. And a lot of people have been telling me I've been doing well. But in private, whew, I kid you not, in private. You know, and I've been responding to YouTube messages and all you wonderful people out there. Um, and I can't thank you enough for your kindness. And you know who you are. I look you right in, look you direct right now. Thank you. You've kept me going. You've kept me going. Very near, very nearly never made that one. But here I am, almost eight months later. Still trying to find my feet. But I'm getting there. Well, we're at another cosmic camp. Camp Risbury, this is. Camp Risbury. Here are, here's my setup. It's my six moons design. Tent, very lightweight, 650 grams. I love the tent. I'm used to setting it up now. It only takes me a matter of minutes. What you do is, you peg this one loose, possibly a few inches in, put the centre peg in, you put that other peg in, possibly a few inches that way. And you've got a carbon fibre pole here, right here, and you place it dead centre with that peg there. Then you get this line and you peg it down and you peg it down tight like that and it lifts the whole structure up. Then you can put those pegs in. And this peg. And then alter the tension throughout the structure. And it takes a matter of minutes. Didn't take long at all. It's a tarp tent, six moons design, Luna Solo tarp tent. And it's got um, it's got a bug net that's sewn in, and this utility space here is really quite large. So, and this is a solo tent. I mean, look at the space in there, guys. <laughs> You can store your kit there.
So that's the Lunar Solo Six Moons design. Finally get these boots off. my birthday today. This is the first time I've uh, had a birthday without my dear brother, my twin. I know the world is going through some really hard times, I know that, I know that. My heart goes out to you all, everyone who's having a heartbreaking, devastating time out there, and there are many of you. But this has been my own loss, isn't it? 48 years, 49 years I spent it with Paul, 48. I've been going through some thoughts and memories just lay here in the tent whilst looking out onto the orchard. Just looking out there. It's a beautiful view. It's not a mountain view, but it's a beautiful view. And I asked for a, a nice memory. And this beautiful smiling face of Paul came through. It was beautiful it was. It's been really, really peaceful here. I couldn't have done a better thing than to come out here and walk the Humberbrook. It's what Paul wanted to do. Of course, my family come from Humberside. My dad's from Humberside, Barton upon Humber. And I'll tell you a story. My mum, in the 1960s, met this man called Terry, that was my dad, to be, and he was from Barton upon Humber. Now the funny thing about that is, is that my grandparents farmed four and a half mile that way on the River Lug. And not too far from their property, The Humber Brook flows into the lug. Now what are the odds of that? <laughs> My mum meets somebody from Humberside and the Humber Brook 
flows into the river where they farm. Most unusual. So I'm walking the brook and uh, as you know <laughs> And from their meeting, my mum and my dad, Terry, my sister was born, Tracy. And then two years, eight months later, Paul and I were born on the 1st of July, 1968. 49 years today. And I am walking the Humber Brook. And I've just been up to Humberside to visit my family two weeks ago. When you think about connections and stuff that's meant to be, you know. You do wonder about these things when somebody as special as your twin brother dies. Was it meant to be? What's special in it? You know? What's the purpose? Well, I'm trying to discover that here as I walk and no doubt the journey is not over you know like any adventure it's it's thwart with the unexpected you got to be prepared for the unexpected haven't you not give up because my brother Paul would not want me to chase him I've not wanted to continue but I have and I've got out there and I've carried on and crucially carried on supporting other people too you got to remember to love during such times as these such terrible grief got to remember to put yourself aside love and support other people other things if you can do that in the midst of your grief then you're going to you're going to win through you're going to come through but yeah i had some wonderful memories and it was absolutely wonderful last night with Erica she shared with me the time Paul and Erica came through this orchard to walk the Iron Age hill fort here at Risbury I can see Erica and Paul walking through this orchard now towards the hill fort just the both of them. Summer 2016. The both of them exploring Herefordshire. Up to the hill fort. Erica said that Paul made her laugh on numerous occasions. As he always did because he was fun. <laughs> it's just so pleasant seeing that image feeling them both here so the walk has been um, a combination of sadness and beautiful memories, nice feelings, and 
that's what we come out for, isn't it? Nice feelings, you know, to invoke positive imagery, good thoughts. And do you know what, Jim? Jim Holden? This is a, a bit of an unusual response to your tag the other day. I may not answer all the questions, but in answer to one question, why do I do YouTube? Well, I do it to share my innermost thoughts and feelings whilst I walk and while camp and bivy and explore not just hills and mountains and rivers, but, you know, beautiful countryside such as this. Just the simple pleasures in life. That's why I make the videos, is to share it with other people. And if they resonate, then we've opened doors, haven't we? We've helped to open doors each and every one of us, you know. And it gets passed along and we create a more open and receptive society, community. And that's why I started YouTube, was to open those doors within myself and externally also in other people. I needed those passageways to be open, those pathways. That's what my brother used to call them, you know, pathways. Creating pathways, you know. So, in answer to your question, Jim, just, it was a need to share real life, basic life. Not just the epic and the wonderful and the awe-inspiring, but the real as well. And I'm thinking of Sandy now as well, you see. Wiltshire man. And my time with Sandy and Paul outdoors the other day up in a beautiful woodland in the Y Valley. And Erica here. And I'm thinking about my family. You know, being outdoors invokes it all, doesn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, it invokes it all. No doubt, Jim, when you were bivy in the other night, you were thinking about your own family, thinking about your current state of being, your health, thinking about wonderful memories, where life is going, where it's been, you know. Or, you know, it helps us, doesn't it, being out here? Better than crawling up four walls, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. YouTube, for me, is a means of uh, sending that broadcast out. And if other people receive the broadcast and resonate, then we've created uh, a platform to lift each other's spirits, haven't we? You know, because we need it. Look at what's going on in the world. So our outdoors community, you know, is a path with a heart. And we act with a heart. And we share our videos. In the hope that it's going to fuel other people to do the same. And it's simple. We've just left um, the mill uh, beside the Humber Brook um, and we had a wonderful cup of tea courtesy of Anna, Colin, uh, Cassia, I think that's pronounced right, and they're wonderful animals. 
beautiful place, uh, amazing old mill. And we've just come up through uh, the field there. It's either wheat or corn, I can never tell the difference. I think it's wheat. And we're heading towards the brook again. We've come wide. So the brook is down there in the valley. You can see this wooded valley, this dip in the land. This dip in the land there. There's the brook. Right there. This is all Mercer property. Uh, a big farming concern in North Herefordshire and I've got John Mercer to thank for being able to uh, walk across the land here because there's no public right of way. Yeah, continue on to Hampton Court. Uh, the SD card ran out there. Uh, Hampton Court is a historic centre, historic uh, manor house uh, dating back to the 13th century. It's quite an awesome place and the gardens well, they were once the most ambitious garden, it was once the most ambitious garden project in England, if not Great Britain. It's, it's a pretty awesome place. And next door to Hampton Court, my grandparents used to farm at Hope Under Dinmore, right on the opposite side of the river. So uh, it's a place I know. All right, uh, going to go through the Mercer property onto Hampton Court and we'll see you there. All right. I, don't, I have no idea where the brook is. That's a bloody jungle in there. That's not going to be easy through there. Now then, you know this is a game trail because there's no public right of way here. So we're following this through, look. Really quite thick in there uh, so I've made my way through to the other side but I've lost the brook <laughs> Somewhere in here is a Humber Brook. There it is. Making its way through. This plantation, woodland. Brilliant. I'm just gonna sit here for a bit because it's really nice and peaceful. You see, you get off the beaten track and you find a really peaceful spot such as this. I just saw a kingfisher in close proximity fly from that direction through here at breakneck speed dodging all these branches all these trees and overhangs and right through there and beyond That was awesome. As quick as you can imagine. 
just darted through this brook here. precise angles I mean it knows this brook this is its pathway that was amazing I've seen probably hundreds of kingfishers in my life over a period of 28 years I've seen hundreds probably about 150 kingfishers maybe and that was another one but that was unique It's their kingdom, isn't it? That was amazing. That was beautiful. Yeah. Of course, the kingfisher is our bird. You know, we associated it with our dad many years ago, Paul and I. And I've received a few, a couple of kingfisher cards and uh, the logo of our business, the Turquoise Sound Company, was a kingfisher. And it's on the Y Explorer website now, Kingfisher. So, yeah, that brings Paul close to me. That's amazing. Along the Humber Brook here. Beautiful. Just came around that bend, heard uh, some cascading water, and came across a nice little waterfall. I haven't seen it yet, so let's take a look. Let's see what it's like. Ah, oh, it's really quite nice. Look at that for a natural feature. It's only a little brook too. very unexpected. I knew there was a waterfall along the course somewhere but I didn't realize that it was quite such a substantial slab of rock. This is probably red sandstone which gives Herefordshire its deep rich red color, the earth. Look at that! Ha. That's beautiful!
Paul told me the DIY party was up here. It was up this track here. It was on top of the hill. This is where the party was. Good memory. And I remember going through those gates with you, Paul, uh, and looking at the Hampton Court property and discussing that event. It was about 2008. We never did get to organise it, did we? Solar Garden Arts and all sorts of other events. We had some amazing ideas, mate. All right, I'm going to go down there now. Nice bit of water just out the trough, uh, filtered it, it should be okay. Pretty handy. All right, you've heard me talk a lot, and I've talked a fair bit, <laughs> but I'm just going to talk just a little bit more. Uh, as I say, the brook is down there, the confluence with the, the Lug. And the River Lug is the first river Paul and I walked from Source to its confluence with the Y as part of the Y Explorer project. It's my birthday, it's the 1st of July. It's the first birthday I've ever experienced without Paul. It's been emotional. Uh, it's been good. I think I've found some resolution. And moreover, it's been a celebration of my life with Paul. And I end it here at the River Lug, which, as I say, was the first river we walked together. I can remember us at the source of the Lug now. Erica was there. She was at the source with us a few years back now. And it was fantastic. It was the start of some amazing walks. It really was. Hey, hey. There it is, guys. That's the lug. Bathed in light. Starts all the way up there in the Radnor Forest. And there's the confluence of the Humber Brook with the lug. Humble affair, isn't it? A brook. The Humber Brook. I mean, when you consider the mighty Humber estuary, that is teeny weeny, isn't it? The Humber Brook. And yet, it feeds water into this river constantly. And there are hundreds of these little brooks feeding the river all the time from all over the catchment. And you wonder why the River Y or such rivers can continually flow like they do? Well, it's because of little brooks like this. Pure and simple, because of feeders such as this, and there are hundreds and thousands of them. You know, people look at the main channel, don't they? You know, they look at the main River Y or the main River Seven, but in fact, you know, the river is much more. It's much more than just that main channel. And this is why Paul and I did these walks. It, it, it enabled us to appreciate uh, the bigger picture. That was a great walk, that. That was brilliant. Loved it. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, what a beautiful, beautiful little brook. What a waterfall, eh? Would you think, I mean, would you really believe that such a humble watercourse as this could produce such a, a beautiful waterfall? I wouldn't. I doubt if Paul uh, would imagine that. 
Yeah, that was great. All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here for a bit. I'm gonna contemplate. I'm gonna remember Paul, and then we're gonna get moving. All right. Great to be with you. It's not over just yet. Got to walk that way. Show you Hampton Court. Then it's over, and then we've got to find another camp. I thought I'd just sit here and remember my life with Paul. And what do you know? I observe a kingfisher maintaining its nest. It, it's not come back since. So you're going to have to take my word for it. And I haven't got a super zoom camera. Uh, or the resources to set one up and just leave it, you know. But that's the first kingfisher nest I've ever identified. And that's amazing. I've just walked the Humber Brook. And it was a walk of remembrance. And I've just identified my first kingfisher nest. Amazing, huh? Right opposite the brook. <laughs> what a walk. Amazing. Uh, Sampton Court, it's a majestic place. Okay, that's, that's me finished. I finished the walk. That was amazing, it was beautiful. Uh, uh, well needed. It was uh, a great end. Sat there watching the kingfisher. At least I think it was a kingfisher. I don't think wrens nest in bank sites. Close to the water that is. Fantastic waterfall, met some wonderful people, and Anna and Colin and uh, Cassia at the mill, Diane, and oh, what's her husband's name? Oh, I forget now. He wanted to get back to the rugby. <laughs> I don't blame him. But anyway, they were good. Mark Furman at the source. Thanks for uh, bringing us out, Mark. Erica meeting us at Steens Bridge and walking around the hill fort with me last night. That was brilliant. Sharing memories of her walking with Paul around the very same fort. Uh, just scrambling through woodland, locating, relocating the brook, following it. It was just a, a fantastic. Uh, adventure and uh, Paul was with me all the way um, there's more healing to do I know that uh, but with you know every step I take I heal a bit more and I find that new relationship with my dear twin and it's about life it's about finding life grasping life we don't understand it all, so I guess that's about letting go and just accepting the way things are. Well, that's that's it for me, from me rather. Uh, if you want to like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to comment, I always look forward to hearing what you got to say. 
Uh, I'm always responsive. And if you want to subscribe, I look forward to your company. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a slow walk now, find a campsite. I'll show you where the campsite is as, as a kind of a finale to the video. Uh, but that's about it. All right, from me, take care and be well.